Well, hello, welcome to Ben Flies RC. Today, we're going to be talking about having an affair. I don't know about you, but sometimes I go on the internet and I look at videos and I think, yeah, that does look really sexy. And I think with the Goose Guy S2 Ultra, a few people have been thinking that and they want to taste that sweet road to flight life. Well, you can, and you don't even have to leave your existing lover. Today, we're going to use the V-Control and macro cells to set up Rotoflight and the S2 Ultra. You're just going to need your V-Control, a Mikado receiver. This is the seven channel micro receiver and then it's been totally stripped and heat shrunk. And we're going to connect that via the S bus on the S2 Ultra. So let's do it. Now, I want to keep this as simple as possible. So I've already created a macro cell file. I'm going to include it in the description below. And with that, you'll be able to just copy that straight to your radio and it should be ready to go. All of the standard channel assignments that come out of the box with your S2 Ultra, it will all line up as well as is possible without having to make any changes on Rotoflight. It's not 100% perfect, I'll show you that, but it's 96% perfect to be exact. So let's start. Okay, step one, we're going to put this in USB stick mode. So settings, USB stick, flip that up, get your USB cable, put that in the back. That's connected. So you can see on the screen, that's popped up with this page V control. We're going to go into macro. As you can see, the file's already there for me. This is the file that I've copied. So you're going to take the file that you download, which is macro S2 Ultra, and you're just going to copy that into there. I'll replace it just for the, the sake of it. So there, that's in. Next step, disconnect the USB. Now we're going to plug in the receiver. So the receiver goes in this back port that says S bus. Polarity, the black is to the rear of the helicopter. Make sure if you've had to solder up any kind of adapter that that is done correctly, otherwise you may well fry something. So we plug that into the S bus port. That's it, we'll secure that later. We go back onto the computer and the link is for the uh, Rotoflight configurator download. So we click that. The latest at the moment is 2.2.1. Select what you have. I've got Windows 64 PC, so it's this one .exe. So you click that, download it, install it, I'm sure you can install a program. I'm not going to show you how to do that. Next step. So I've got my road flight configurator here. I'm going to double click on that to open it up. And we are going to get a USB-C cable plugged into your computer. USB-C cable, plug that into the USB-C port on your rotor flight. That's connecting. We got rotor flight up here. Click connect. And that's it. It's connected to the helicopter. Now, we can get the radio already set up before we even change anything in road flight. So I'm going to pull that to one side. That's all we need to do on that for now. So mine has already bound itself because I did obviously set this up to create the file. But as it would be with any other V-bar, at the top here you have the bind button. Just press that, bind to that receiver. And then we'll go in here, we'll go model setup, set up new model, start a new model. And we're going to scroll across and select S bus. Wait for that to send all the data over. And then if you scroll down, macro cell setup, load macro cells. And there is the file that we've copied over. So Goose Guy S2 Ultra, load macro cell setup. Yes, sending data. Now I'm actually not a VBuy user, so I'm not 100% sure if you need to download the widget for macro cells. So in the same way that you've got to go through the online system with Mercado to download whatever it is on your radio. I'm not sure if that's something you have to add or not, but I guess if you're a VBAR user, you'll know. So this was already on the radio I received. Someone can comment below, I'm sure. So you have got the in-out configuration done now. So that's all set up. It's AUX1 going to S bus. It's everything that I set up for this model. And if I go to edit macro cells, for some reason it starts from channel level and it's channel one. And that's it. That is the channel layout that I programmed. 
Now let's go and have a look on the computer. So we connected the model already via the USB. It's showing up here as you can see. It all comes preset out of the box, so the road flight programming is already correct. There's two things that we need to change. So we are going to go into configuration and where it says UART1, we're going to click disable and where it says UART2, we're going to click serial RX. That is to change from the ELRS port to the S bus port. Save and reboot that. And in the receiver section, it has TBS CRSF, which is the ELRS. Here we're going to click on Futaba S bus. And then we're going to click save and reboot. And all being well, because this is the first time I actually tried doing it. Yes, we've got signal. So now, left aileron, right aileron, forwards, backwards, left, right, collective up, collective down, and then this switch is what I'm using as the throttle hold, so you push that away from you, that's motor run, motor off, motor is it towards you. On the top left, we should be seeing AUX2 is moving, as you can see. Bank one. That will be your banks. This switch on the top left front side of the radio is for arming. So with rotor flight, you'll need to flick this away from yourself to disarm the helicopter and then your throttle switch will be live and you will be able to fly. So we leave that disarmed when we're not flying. And the final one is going to be this top right hand switch which I have set up for stability. Now I don't know which way around it's set. So if we go to adjustments We'll check that the profiles are working correctly. So this is the profile and rate selection. When we go one, two, two. three, as you can see with the macro cells that you've put on, that's moving as it should be. And if we go to modes, should be as we flick this away, arm is disabled. So that's correct. So that will be ready to fly. And the angle, which is your stability, it will stay level. When you, when you have the switch away from you on the top right, then the model will automatically level. And then when you flick it towards you, you've got full control, full 3D mode. That's it. So when I said it's almost perfect, to not have to make any other changes within Rotorflight, this is as simple as you can do it. I had to put a little bit of trim into the radio. And if you look on like roll, we get 96% travel. 97% on the other side. So we're like a few percentage off being absolutely perfect with the signal. It's not gonna make a difference. I've flown it, it's fine. Um, if you want to manage to get the full travel, then we'll need to change the stick centering and maximum travel, which I'll make a separate short for if people are really interested, but I'm pretty confident that this is fine. and you're flying V-bar because you don't want to faff around with this, so this is fine. All right, that should basically be ready. Have I missed anything? No, let's power up the model. Let's see if it works. So that's all set. So I'm going to disconnect that. We obviously need to secure this receiver. We'll get around to that. So with it in the switch towards you disarmed, hold on. Plug it in. It initialized, collective up, collective down, left, right, forwards, backwards, and the corrections left, right, forwards, and backwards. The only other thing actually that I will say, if we just reconnect the model, to change your rates, you'll need to connect the model to a computer or to an Android phone with the app on. Again, maybe another little short if uh, people would like that. But from in here, you have your three rate profiles, which are decided by the switch that you select here. So by default, you've got rate one, which is on a slightly lower RPM, and you've got this agility, 330, 330, 580. Um, and then on rate two, on, sorry, two and three, they're very similar. I don't know why the tail slightly increases over each rate. Anyway, what's cool is that you can actually see what the model is doing here. 
on the screen. So you can decide how fast you want that to be and you just type in the number in here and if you want the tail to be really slow, for example, <laughs> I don't recommend you run the tail at 120, but that's full travel <laughs> at 120. So you can literally do whatever you want. I don't actually know if there's a limit. Can we run a thousand? Yes. <laughs> don't try that. Uh, I'll go back to 620, but there we go. If you want to set your rates and your expo, it's all in that screen. Now let's just quickly maiden it, make sure that I'm correct and this model will fly and you're all ready to go. So surprise, surprise, England is Englanding again and it's pouring with rain. So we'll just quickly hover in here to make sure that everything is working correctly. What did that take? Five minutes? So not too bad. So as we said, you've got to disarm. So flick that one away from yourself and then we'll flick out of throttle hold. I'm in bank one. We'll just give it a quick hover in here. Motor on. Lovely. So that's it, we got an S2 Ultra flying on the V-Control. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope that was helpful for some people. It really wasn't too bad, right? It's not super complicated to get one of these running. So if you wanna dabble your feet, cheat a little bit, try some rotor flight, then absolutely give it a go. You won't regret it. Subscribe for more videos like this. I'll do my best to throw out any content, ask me any questions, and as much as I don't know all that much, I'll do my best to answer them, or I'll ask someone who does know the answer. Time it takes me to